Uh, today we're going to be discussing how you can approach your organization's calendar year end closing process with confidence. Um, our goals for today's uh, session will be to really review the common year end processes for a number of modules that we'll discuss here in just a moment. Uh, and also then provide you with some tips and tricks for preparing for the year end. And truthfully, preparing for the year end is the most important part as the task itself of closing is very simple. We are going to review year end checklists and we'll provide you an overview and some commentary on that. So uh, for the modules that uh, have year end closing processes and that you use, uh, hopefully this will be very valuable. And we're going to step through some of the applicable windows in GP so that you can actually see what the windows look like and how this process really works. So I have a few recommendations that I wanted to share with you before we go too far into this. So first of all, the, and probably the most important thing is um, because you only do this once a year and it isn't cast to memory necessarily, and if you run into any issues, we want to make sure that you use your resources. And some of the common resources that you'll have access to as a GP user are customer source, for those of you that already use Customer Source, you know that this is a, um, a site uh, that Microsoft provides for GP clients to be able to go in and get updated news on what's new with the product. Also, it has a knowledge base that provides um, a variety of different answers to questions and problems. And included in that uh, knowledge base uh, will be all of the year-end checklists for the modules that are available in GP. So feel free to use that. And I'm going to actually reference some articles that will be available in Customer Source uh, here in just a few moments. Also, if you run into any trouble, you can use uh, the Dynamics GP support uh, team. Uh, they're always going to be glad to help you with any issues or questions that you may encounter. And then obviously, uh, we at Socius are glad to help, and that's part of the reason that we're uh, uh, taking the time to do this uh, session today, is to get you ready. So uh, in preparation, and as we say, be prepared, one of the obvious things is, is to make sure that all of your day-to-day -day activities are completed. So posting any transactions that apply to 2014 in this case. Uh, and make sure that those are all ready so that you can run the year-end uh, process uninterrupted. Um, and probably another word of wisdom that uh, you may want to follow is just be methodical. Don't rush through the process. So make sure that you review and follow the year-end checklist that we're going to uh, talk about today. Uh, certainly feel free to download those off a customer source so that you have access to them. Another thing that's really important is verify uh, your ISV compatibility. And you're probably wondering, what do I mean by that? Well, if any of you have uh, independent software vendor or third-party applications that work with your Dynamics GP, it's really important that you uh, know uh, that your, these products are compatible with any of the year-end updates that are going to come out. So we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into some of the modules. And then I can't emphasize enough, and I'll be talking about this all the way through this presentation, please make sure that you make backups. Um, the worst thing that can happen is, is that uh, you're in the middle of a year end, especially with your general ledger, and your system goes down, uh, and you don't have a backup to go back to. So certainly make sure that you make that a priority and part of this process. Some other resources that you'll have available to you are uh, GPUG. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the uh, GP user group. Uh, there is a website, www.gpug.com. Uh, there's also a website, gpwindow.com, where a variety of experts on GP will provide uh, knowledge, uh, as, and part of that would be uh, with the year-end process. And then, obviously, you can do uh, a... Um, an internet search to find some of these processes as well. So make sure that you're using your resources. That's very, very important in, in making sure that you have a successful year end. Uh, as I said just a few moments ago, uh, the knowledge base that's available within uh, the customer source uh, site um, are going to play a role and, and will certainly provide you with information. Uh, on the very specific steps that you want to follow as you close the individual modules. And so each one of those articles is assigned a number, and so I've provided those numbers to you here. The inventory control 
uh, year-end checklist is uh, knowledge base number 872-713. Receivables management is 857-444. Payables management is 875-169. And you can read through the rest of these to see these numbers. But this will be an easy way for you to search customer source to find these articles. And feel free to do that because it will be very useful and gives you uh, a checklist to follow. Just a few guidelines that I think are common sense, but certainly want to make sure that you're thinking about as you go into your year end. Don't rush in. So finalize any and all applicable transactions that apply to 2014 in this case. Uh, reconcile your sub-modules to the general ledger. That includes payables, receivables, etc. Print any of your necessary reports and files before you close your year. Uh, and here I go again, make a backup when you're finished, and then begin the closing process. As you'll see as we go through this, uh, the modules, many of the modules should be closed at, at near the same time. Uh, the general ledger is an exception to that, and we'll talk about that in more detail when we get to that module. So uh, there is a method and a, um, an order for which you should follow. Uh, in regards to what modules should be closed before others. And so you may have some or all of these modules that you use actively in your Dynamics GP solution, but what we want to make sure of is that you follow this order uh, as appropriate. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is sales order processing and purchase order processing, and this will be actually a very short uh, discussion about those modules as they really have no formal closing process. But I do want to make sure that you're thinking about a couple things you want to do before you close. We'll talk about inventory control. We'll talk about uh, receivables management, payables management, fixed asset management, payroll, analytical accounting, and general ledger. So if you follow this order, uh, everything should work out just the way you need it to. And I want to emphasize again, making backups. So you may do these uh, individual modules one at a time, and each time you do a backup be uh, before you do the process itself. So let's talk a moment for sales order processing and purchase order processing. So first of all, there really is no specific year-end closing process. There's no button to hit that says year-end or process. Uh, but there are some things that you should think about as both sales order processing and purchase order processing integrate very closely into your um, receivables, payables, and inventory modules. So from a sales order processing perspective, please make sure that you double check for any applicable invoices and returns and post those transactions uh, prior to running your year-end close. Uh, also, on the purchase order side, make sure that you double check for any applicable receivers or invoice matches and make sure that you post those transactions as well. On the purchase order side, there's one other thing that you want to think about. There is a, actually a report uh, that you have available to you called Receive, Not Invoice, and that actually uh, can be used to tie out your accrued purchases liability account uh, in your general ledger. So each time that you enter uh, a purchase order and then receive goods against it, an accrued payable or accrued purchases account gets hit, and that balance should balance out to what you see uh, in your general ledger. You actually can get to that report uh, by following the following path. Go to Purchasing on the left-hand side of your screen, then go to Reports. Uh, this report actually falls under a group called Analysis. And then the report itself is called Received, Not Invoiced. So feel free to uh, follow that process uh, and make sure that you uh, are recon have that reconciled before you move on. Again, what I'm going to do, and one thing I want you to make sure that you notice, is that in many cases I'm going to give you a path to get to the screen that you need to get to to perform the task that you need to perform, whether that be uh, printing a report, or closing the year in the appropriate modules. So now, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on into the inventory control module. Uh, and really, uh, I wanted to start off by just kind of telling you when uh, the inventory module should be closed. It should actually be closed at the end of your fiscal year, 
before any new transactions that would affect inventory quantities are posted. So uh, many of you that uh, have uh, attended our webinars are actually operating on a calendar year, but others may be working on what we call a fiscal year. So a very common uh, cycle would be July 1 to June 30. And the inventory control year-end closing process is specifically meant to be done at the close of your fiscal year. That may or may not correspond to the calendar year. So what does the inventory control year-end close process do? Well, there are several things. So first of all, uh, and oftentimes what you'll find is, is that there are summary numbers for the current year that get moved into a last year column. And so inventory is no different than that. So what you're going to see here is it transfers all the summarized current year quantity, cost, and sales amounts to last year for the items for which you've been keeping summarized sales history. It also updates the, each item's beginning quantity from the quantity on hand at each site. And this does play a role then in your inventory turnover reports and others. And then lastly, it zeroes the quantity sold field in the item quantities maintenance, uh, which you can find under inventory, cards, quantities, and sites for each site. So you can look at this for each site. So the quantity sold will start over when you close your year so that you can track the quantity of an item sold for the fiscal year that is current. When you do the year-end closing, it's actually a very simple process, but there are some things that you want to think about. So there are some options on the year-end closing window, uh, and one of those is the ability to remove discontinued items from your inventory. So as many of you probably know that use inventory, uh, you have the ability to, to turn an item from a sales inventory item into a discontinued item if that item is discontinued by your suppliers. Uh, what this allows you to do in normal process is that you can no longer issue a purchase order for that part number. However, you can still sell it until it has a quantity of zero. So what this function does at the year end is allows you to remove any discontinued items from your inventory uh, at year end. The, also, the system tracks sold receipts. Uh, so as you each time that you receive goods, uh, the system will actually track the, the receipts, and then as those items are sold from those receipts, it'll track that. And any receipt records that are completely sold will be taken away and removed out of the system. The same be true for uh, sold lot attributes and also cost change history. And then lastly, if you're... Uh, uh, costing your items using a standard costing method, which would be LIFO or FIFO periodic, then the system can automatically then go in and update the item's standard cost. So what are the steps you need to follow? Well, this list should give you a pretty comprehensive uh, idea of the things that you should do and in what order. So first of all, you should post all the transactions for the year. And I'm even going to backtrack a moment and say that not only do you post inventory transactions, but any appropriate sales order processing and purchase order processing transactions that should be moved before you close your year. You can also then reconcile your inventory quantities. Um, and then uh, oftentimes, and this is even for small organizations, this is a fairly common time for you to do a complete fiscal inventory count and post any adjustments to your inventory prior to closing your year. Any additional reports that you may use, such as stock status reports, uh, can then be printed uh, as part of your normal process. And then before you actually go to close the year, then you just make a backup. Once you, once you follow the closed year process, then you can close the fiscal periods for the inventory series. And we'll talk about the fiscal periods for each of the modules. And before we finish today, I'll show you the, um, the uh, fiscal period setup window that I'm referring to in regards to closing periods. And then lastly, once you've got that task completed, then you'll make a final backup. So what I wanted to do is take you into, uh, give you a screenshot of the year-end closing process for Dynamics GP. 
And by the way, uh, for those of you that see icons on this window that look a little different, this is actually Dynamics GP 2013 Release 2. And actually, uh, prior to this recording, uh, Dynamics GP 2015 has been released as well. Um, but uh, so this window is going to be common for anybody that's on 2010, 2013, 2013 Release 2, and also GP 2015. Some differences may be on the ribbon across the top of each window. Um, but as we referred to, this is where you close the year. And you'll notice that there's a process button to do that. And then you have the options prior to pr pressing the process button to remove discontinued items, sold lot, lot attributes, and sold receipts and cost change history, uh, and then also updating the item standard cost, each of these items we just talked about. All right, so that's inventory. Uh, so we certainly want to make sure that you do this on a timely fashion to make sure that uh, the system gets updated appropriately. But now it's time for another backup and we're going to move on to our next module. So next we're going to go into the receivables management module. And receivables, like payables, actually has two year end closing processes and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. Uh, but in receivables, the calendar year end close uh, should be done at the end of the calendar year prior to posting any transactions for the, in the next calendar year. Makes sense. The fiscal year end close should be done at the end of the fiscal year prior to posting any transactions in the next fiscal year. Now, you're probably wondering why are there two different uh, closes for receivables? Well, the calendar year end close uh, for receivables actually clears the calendar year to date finance charges and moves those finance charges to the last year calendar field in customer finance charge summary. And you can get to that by going to sales, cards, summary, and finance charges. Um, this really uh, is important for those of you that uh, assess finance charges to any of your clients for late payments. Now the fiscal year and close basically zeroes everything else out. So the fiscal year close uh, transfers all amounts other than the calendar year to date finance charges amount to the last year column in the customer summary using the amount since last closed view. And we're going to talk about this amount since last closed view uh, in a little bit more detail here in just a couple minutes. But you can get to this summary view in sales, cards, and summary. One side note to that is if the amounts are incorrect in the amount since last closed view, uh, you can contact support because they're, uh, at Microsoft because there are scripts that can be ran to correct the amounts. So these scripts um, actually are really important uh, because there are times where people actually will not do the close on time, in which case there will be totals included in the uh, year-to-date amounts for, for views such as smart list and amounts since last closed that will be incorrect and include data that it shouldn't. This, this, these scripts will actually make corrections to that. And we'll talk in a minute, but that same kind of uh, process exists on your payable side as well. So the actual steps that you follow to close receivables is simple. You post all the sales, uh, sales order processing, and receivables transactions for the year. You make a, a pre-year end closing backup. You then will close the year. And then, uh, like we talked about in inventory, we have the uh, option then of closing the fiscal periods. And then lastly, you'll close the tax year. And this is done for both receivables and payables at the same time. And then lastly, uh, you'll make a post-year-end closing backup. So to give you a, a little bit of a screenshot of some of these windows that we're talking about, the closing window is actually very simple. Uh, you'll notice that you have the uh, option when it says year to close of doing all, fiscal, or calendar. So if you actually operate on a calendar year, you can do both the fiscal and the calendar year and close all at once so that it will affect the uh, finance charges and all of the other fields as we talked about previously. You'll notice that this window also gives us a last closing date so you can tell the last time that you did the close and that field, those two fields will be updated after you finish the close. Lastly then you have the ability to print a report uh, that will show you the, the effect of the closing process. 
Now, I wanted to get into uh, a, a discussion about the amount since last close. So there is some date sensitivity in the reporting inside of Dynamics GP for receivables. So if you go to sales, cards, and summary, what you're going to see is a customer summary. And this customer summary can be looked at uh, in a couple different ways. So first of all, you can see there's amount since last closed, there's fiscal year, and there's calendar year. So the amount since last closed is the field that we, uh, that we feel is the most important in regards to the year in closing because that field, that uh, year-to-date amount, is what's included when you select year-to-date sales or year-to-date uh, cash receipts, et cetera, in the receivables module. So you'll notice here uh, on this window, you'll see a year-to-date column, a last-year column, and a life-to-date column. So um, as you do your year in closing, uh, everything that's in year-to-date will be moved to last year. Everything that was in last year will be moved to life-to-date. And so for this to be done and these numbers to be proper, uh, you want to make sure that you close uh, at the appropriate time, as we talked about earlier. And then this is just an example of a smart list that I've put together to show you, and I'm sure most of you use smart list, but this total sales year-to-date column that I've highlighted here is going to use the amount since last closed. And again, if this number is improper based upon uh, timing of your close, you do have the ability to run scripts that can update that, that, uh, that column to make sure that it's appropriate. And then lastly, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the tax year in close. And this, as I said, applies to both payables and receivables in one process. So to get to that, you go to administration, routines, and tax year in close. So uh, the next thing we wanted to talk about uh, is there is actually a process uh, for uh, statements. Uh, so many of you, uh, if you do assess finance charges, may uh, put those finance charges on your statements. And there is actually a year-end closing checklist that's included in the overall receivables management checklist that has instructions on finance charge printing on December and January statements when you're doing your calendar year-end. So please take note of that for any of you that this applies. So that's receivables. Um, and uh, we'll move on. Our next module up is payables. And uh, you'll notice that a lot of there are a lot of similarities between what we talked about in receivables and what we'll talk about in payables. There's a calendar year in close routine um, for the payables module that, cl that you want to do at the end of your calendar year. And then there's a fiscal year in close routine that you want to do for closing your fiscal year. The calendar year in close in this case for payables really is uh, there for the 1099 amounts uh, columns that you can pull into a smart list and the amount since last closed. The fiscal year in is for everything else. So purchases year to date, amount paid year to date, et cetera. We still have the same uh, flexibility and uh, ability to uh, run scripts that can update the amount since last close view if um, you were unable to close your year at the appropriate time. Um, and this is actually fairly common in regards to a lot of times you may be waiting for uh, some invoices to come in into the next month. And in this case, at the calendar year end, you may be waiting for invoices in, uh, that apply to December that are coming in in January. The process itself is, uh, again, fairly simple. You want to post all your transactions for the year. And I didn't elaborate as much as I did in receivables, but when I say post all transactions, I'm also talking about uh, receipts of uh, invoices through the purchase order module. Uh, it's a good time to then print an age trial balance with options report. And many of our clients will also print uh, the vendor period analysis report. And then lastly, uh, and this may seem a little strange to you, but install the payroll year-end update. When we get to the payroll section, you'll, you'll note that every year there's a payroll year-end update. And that really is meant uh, predominantly for updates to forms and so forth as you, as you get ready to wind up your year uh, in payroll. But 
uh, it is really a service pack, and it may include things like uh, um, 1099 uh, form updates, et cetera. So uh, there may be occasion for which the payroll year-end update applies to your payables module as well. So once you've installed that payroll year-end update, if appropriate, then you can make a backup that is named pre-1099 update and verify that the 1099 amount information, uh, verify that amount and edit it if it's required. Now, if, uh, now many of you may still be on GP2010, but if you're on GP2013 or 2015, you do have some functionality that's available. Uh, so you'll notice here that we have an option under utilities to update 1099 information. So if there are uh, vendors, as for example, that should be labeled as a 1099 vendor but were not, uh, or the wrong box was selected, et cetera, you'll have an opportunity here to update that vendor or that group of vendors. You'll also notice under our transactions area, we have the ability to edit 1099 transaction information. So this is actually new to GP 2013 and also applies to GP 2015 for those of you that are thinking of moving in that direction. So uh, please keep in mind that there may be times where, as an example, during a year, you do business with a, a vendor, uh, but you don't get their, uh, their paperwork that indicates that they're a 1099 vendor until after you've done transactions with them. This does allow you to have some flexibility in regards to updates uh, throughout the year, and you can also double check at the end of the year. So uh, printing the 1099 statements, I will say this, the 1099, that process is actually a um, uh, date sensitive ses uh, section, uh, so we have the ability to uh, select a year for which the 1099s do, are to be printed. So really, the area the, of uh, concern in regards to making sure you do your, ten, your uh, year end on time is really around those year to date columns that we've referred to. And it, worst come to worst, you do have scripts that can correct those. Uh, you also then want to make a backup that is uh, a pre-year end and then closing the year. So this section may seem a little out of, out, of, uh, out of order, and it can be because you don't have to close the year, or you can close the year, I should say, uh, prior to printing your 1099s. Once you close the year, then optionally, again, you have the ability to close the fiscal periods close the tax year, and then make a final backup that's called post year end. Just to give you a couple looks at this, here's the tax year and closing window. Looks very familiar. It's the same window we showed you from the receivable side. Uh, this is actually the year and closing window, and again, it should look almost identical to what we looked at on the receivable side. So you have the ability, if you're on a calendar year, to close both years at the same time or separately you can do a fiscal and a calendar year end. The system does allow you to print a report as a result of this and you also will get date updates once it's concluded to show when the year end was done. This uh, screen also should look very familiar because it's similar to what we saw on the receivable side in that the system tracks uh, year to date, last year and life to date columns and uh, based upon your year in closing, those columns get updated appropriately. And here's an example of a smart list that I was talking about where you can see the amount billed year to date. Uh, I, I put this together with the vendor information plus that year to date amount. That year to date amount is, uh, is, uh, is the most important. This is the amount since last closed amount in the year to date. So as you can see, there's a lot of similarities between payables and receivables. And uh, so uh, the, fundamentally, uh, they are uh, almost identical in process and that there are two year in closes, a fiscal and a calendar that can either be done at the same time for those of you on a calendar year or can be done separately based upon your true fiscal year. The other thing I'd like to say is, is that when you do this year in close, it is a fairly quick process. Uh, the year-end close for the general ledger can be much more time-consuming, but uh, because only summary numbers are getting updated uh, from the year-end close process uh, in payables and receivables, uh, you shouldn't expect that that will be nearly as uh, time-consuming. All right, well, let's uh, do another backup and let's move on. Our next module that we're going to talk about is 
fixed assets. Uh, so uh, there's a fairly simple uh, year in closing process in fixed assets. And there's uh, some things you should do to make sure that you prepare. So the first thing I wanted to make sure that you're doing is perform all the year in closing procedures for payables. So payables and fixed assets work together uh, or can. And you want to make sure that payables is closed prior to fixed assets. You want to make sure that all of your fixed asset transactions, and this can be additions, retirements, etc., that all of those are taken care of uh, for the fiscal year. You want to make sure that all of your assets are depreciated through the last day of the current fiscal year. And then you also want to make sure that you perform the GL closing process, or the GL posting process, I should say. Once you've done that, then you can also, uh, as is routine throughout the year, run any, uh, or I'm sorry, um, you at this point you can run any year-end reports that you want to keep as part of the process for your financial records. Lastly, uh, these last four steps are making sure that the fixed asset calendar is built correctly, verify that the quarters are set up correctly for all the fiscal years, create a backup, and then lastly, run your fixed asset closing routine. This is the window, and to get to that, you go to Financial Routines, Fixed Assets, and Year End, and this will get you right to the place that you want to go. And you can see that you can close one or multiple books all at the same time. So fixed assets is actually a pretty simple process. All right, so let's uh, make another backup and let's then move on. So this, uh, where we're headed now is payroll. And payroll is probably the most intense of all of the modules when it comes to year end. Uh, and this is always based upon a 1231 year. So payroll is, uh, as you know, uh, uh, requires uh, the W-2 forms and things. So everything done in payroll revolves around a calendar year. So the first thing is, is you want to con uh, confirm status of any new updates from Microsoft. And we're going to talk about that uh, in more detail here shortly. I did want to let you know that for this year end, uh, the supported versions are Dynamics GP 2010. And this actually will be the last year-end update that's available for GP2010. So for any of you that are using GP2010, you want to look into either upgrading to 2013 or 2015. And another important factor to keep in mind is that there is no support in GP2010 for the Affordable Care Act that will be put in place starting in January. We also then are going to talk about GP2013 and GP2015 as they are uh, the support versions moving forward. So the year-end update is, an all is all inclusive of prior updates for GP 2010 and 2013. So once you've loaded the um, year-end update for GP 2010, uh, you should, uh, if you go into help about Microsoft Dynamics GP, you should see that your version is 11.0.2351. And if you're on GP 2013, you should see 12.0.1801. So that'll that'll assure you that 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 um, service pack has been updated and that your system is where it needs to be. Uh, the 2014 year-end update uh, and 2015 tax updates will not be available for Dynamics GP 10.0 and prior. So if any of you are on this on this uh, webinar and are on GP10 or prior and you're using payroll, uh, you uh, will not receive any updates. And that actually is, uh, that has been true for uh, this year and last year. So just keep that in mind. Uh, certainly uh, talk to your associate's account manager or consultant about uh, what it would take to upgrade. The 2014 year-end update has been released uh, for Dynamics GP 2010 and 2013. And so uh, that actually, I believe, was released uh, on the 18th or 19th of November. Uh, the 2014 year-end update uh, for GP 2015 will be released in January. Uh, but uh, there probably are very few of you that will be on GP 2015 uh, at this point. Um, 
The 2015 tax update will be available uh, by the week of December 20th. And to get to that, you just go to uh, Microsoft Dynamics GP, Maintenance, and U.S. Payroll Updates. So that'll be the quickest way. And then uh, all state and federal level tax updates will be available there. If you uh, are on, if you have local taxes in payroll, those um, are available via a number of ISV or third-party uh, partners, uh, or they can be entered uh, and updated manually. All right. So uh, the big, the big news uh, for payroll starting in G in 2015 is the enactment of the Affordable Care Act. So the forms uh, 1094C and 1095C will be used by employers with uh, 50 or more full-time employees or full-time equivalents to determine whether they are liable for penalties on the employer shared responsibility requirements of the Affordable Care Act. So uh, as I said earlier, the Affordable Care Act uh, functionality will be available with the year-end update for 2014 for GP 2013 and GP 2015. Uh, advanced, uh, I'm sorry, the Affordable Care Act functionality is not going to be available for GP 2010 and prior. So uh, if you're on GP 2010 and you're using payroll, don't panic, uh, but you should be planning for an up upgrade to GP 2013 or 2015 in the near future. Okay. So the ACA functionality requires the use of the GP human resources module as well as payroll. And again, I don't want you to panic about that because anyone on GP 2013 or 15 actually owns the um, HR module as well as payroll, uh, as that's included in all licensing moving forward. So um, there, uh, there are some updates, uh, and also there are some easy ways for us to sync up the HR and the payroll module so that the employees are shared and uh, the information can be entered so that uh, you'll be ACA compliant. And that doesn't have to happen uh, right on January 1. Um, there, will be, there will be an opportunity for you to make updates. Now optionally, there are the following ISVs or third-party uh, organizations have solutions to address ACA as well. So these companies are AIM Technologies, Green Shades, and SIPNEO Software. So these organizations will have solutions that won't require the HR module. Uh, but again, uh, it's not as if you have to use HR full function. You can use um, uh, just a bit of it to capture the um, uh, Affordable Care Act information that's necessary. So the 1094C, for those of you who don't know, is a summary the employer fills out of all the employees that have received the 1095C. So a 1094C should accompany the 1095C to the IRS. It is a transmittal of employer-provided health insurance offer and coverage information. The 1095C, uh, that goes to the employee, and it's like a W-2. So starting in 2015, uh, these, these forms are going to become a, a part of the process that we'll have with payroll. So I wanted to give you just a couple looks here. And for those of you that use HR, you may see some differences, and I tried to highlight those in some of these screenshots. So on the employee dependence window, you'll notice that there's a new drop-down window for health insurance coverage. That applies to the uh, uh, ACA. There's a health insurance enrollment window, and there's some updates now for the Affordable Care Act there. You can see those. And what these are is the, the coverage codes uh, for uh, the um, Affordable Care Act. There are two new windows that collect, or there's one new window that is the Affordable Care Act codes. So you can see uh, here that we have a line on the 1095, uh, line 14 and line 16, and there's different codes that are valid for that. These are actually uh, a part of the, uh, the new uh, functionality that we provided in GP 2013 and 2015. Also you can see that the editing of the W-2 window has been updated, and there's a new button for the 1095C for employees. 
There's also uh, the uh, here's the window for editing the 1095C and another window that applies to the 1095C. So uh, there are a number of new windows that will be available. There's also a variety of new tables that are available as well. And uh, before we move on, I just wanted to say real quickly, uh, we have done an, a little bit of homework. In fact, we've done quite a bit of homework in regards to ISVs to make sure that their products are compliant with the new changes that have been made because there are new screens and there are new tables that data is being collected in. Uh, you want to make sure uh, that your, that your uh, integration tools or any other products that may interact with payroll or HR uh, are compliant, as well as the fact that, as we said, the year-end update for payroll is actually a service pack, so there actually may be enhancements or changes to other modules as well. So what's the year-end process for payroll? All you have to do is verify that you've installed the latest uh, 2014 payroll tax update, and that can be uh, installed right away. Uh, make sure that you complete all the pay runs for the current year. Then you want to complete all month-end, period-end, or quarter-end procedures for the current year. Make a backup of the original file, and then install that year-end update. I'm going to show you some screens around the year-end update and some of the things that get done there. Uh, when you install the year-end update, then you'll move on to creating the year-end file. And for those of you who don't know, the year-end file basically is taking all of the activity for the year, dropping it into a new file, so that you can close your year and start into the new year. It's so that you actually can run 2015 payrolls while uh, still editing and updating 1099s, or I'm not, I'm sorry, 1099Rs and W-2s for uh, 2014. So once you've created the year in file, you can make a backup. And so this is the window that you'll see, and this is where you start your year end process. So you go to payroll routines and year in closing and you'll notice it doesn't say process it says create year end wage file uh, and for what year so we would my demo data says 2017 years would say 2014 then once you've done that then you want to verify the w2 and 1099r information print the w2s and the w3 transmittal form print the 1099r and the 1096 transmittal form Optionally, if you're, uh, you can create the W-2 electronic file. And then some of you optionally may archive inactive employee in human resources information and then set up the physical periods for 2015. And in reality, setting up the physical periods for 2015 applies to all the modules. So uh, I did want to back up for just a second and say you really don't have to uh, print your W-2s and your 1099-Rs uh, immediately after creating the year-end wage file. Uh, as you know, you have until the end of January to produce those W-2s, and you may move on and actually start preparing uh, payrolls for the new year prior to uh, uh, doing the 1099s. So there may be some extra work to do there. So this window is uh, where you can print the uh, year-end wage report. The year-end wage report is a report that looks at the year-end wage file that we built as the first step of our year-end closing process. And this will then give you uh, all of the information for each employee. Uh, and then once you do that, you'll have uh, the ability to edit your W-2s. So you can see here that you can pick the year, the employee. It should then show you a summary of all of the numbers that apply to that employee, and you have the ability to update those. You then can print uh, your W-2 forms as well. And notice that this is actually all of these year-end closing processes, like the other modules, uh, exist underneath the routine section. The same process uh, exists for the 1099-R documents as well. So you have the ability to edit those and then produce those. And again, this is a, a, a date-sensitive a date uh, uh, function so that it will print for the year that you select. 
Also then, here's the window that you'll get to to uh, do your W-2 electronic filing. And in some cases, the format of this file may be suitable for some tax filing as well. However, there are, um, there are actually uh, tools that are available, green shades being included in them, that allow you to actually produce your, um, your state and uh, local level tax filing as well. Okay, so once you're done all, with all of that, you optionally can close the fiscal periods for the payroll series for 2014, and then lastly, you'll install the payroll tax update for 2015. And it's important to wait until you've done your year-end, uh, you've created your year-end wage file before you load the tax update because um, we've run into situations where uh, the tax update gets loaded too soon and it does have an effect on what that year-end wage file calculates off of. So just be aware of that. And I did want to show you, this is from the home page, and from you go to Dynamic GP, you go to Maintenance, and you'll notice that there's an option here that's called U.S. Payroll uh, Updates, and that's where you can actually check for your tax updates. So once you've done, uh, you built your year and wage file, then you can come out here and you can check for those tax updates. Also, um, I wanted to make sure you're aware of where you can actually download uh, tax updates, um, and, um, and your year-end update as well. So this is for 2010, 2013, and these slides will be available for you out on the website. So the most recent fixes for uh, Dynamics GP and other quality report fixes related to payroll uh, are out there. There are no W-2 or W-3 form changes, but I, there are some W-2 electronic filing changes that are available. Uh, Dynamics GP, uh, this is important too, Dynamics GP currently supports electronic filing of W-2 information in the federal EFW-2 format. And like I said just a moment ago, some states actually also accept this format. And the same is true then for the 1099-R forms as well. So that's payroll, and as you can see, payroll has its own nuances. Uh, is a little bit more detailed, and if you have questions, we're certainly glad to help. So you can feel free to reach out to your account manager or your lead consultant. So we're going to make another backup, and we're going to move on. Our next module is analytical accounting. And so some of you probably use analytical accounting for a variety of reasons, uh, whether you're tracking project costs uh, or uh, some people use this to track grants, and uh, there's just a variety of different dimensions that you can track, and they're all user-defined. So there really isn't a, a separate year and closing process for the analytical accounting module. However, there are some settings that uh, one of them is uh, balance brought forward entries. Uh, are created for analytical accounting dimensions automatically as part of the year and closing process if you select to do so. And I'll show you a screen that will talk about that. So under the Dynamics GP uh, tools, you go into uh, Setup, Company, and Analytical Accounting Options. You'll see that there is an Include Dimensions in the year and close. So that's the first setting you have to have checked. Uh, so that the year-end closing process actually has some sort of an effect. Now, other things, like we've seen people use this for job costing, and you may not want to uh, have any, the year-end have any effect on the job cost. So uh, it, it, you wouldn't necessarily want to make sure that that's checked, depending on what your dimensions are that you're tracking. And then also, uh, we have a window here that uh, when you set up your dimensions, there's an option under year and close that allows you to consolidate balances during the year and close. And so uh, you want to, again, determine what is the appropriate setting based upon the dimensions that you're using and the purpose of those dimensions. So lastly, uh, but certainly not least, uh, we're going to go into the general ledger module. Um, the general ledger is unique in that it does not require, uh, does not have to be closed right at the end of the year. And in fact, you have the ability to have more than one open year inside of general ledger at the same time. Uh, so there are some ramifications, but we wanted to make sure that you knew about all of this. 
So in General Ledger, you want to make sure that you complete the posting procedures and the closing procedures for all of the other modules. Uh, post the final adjusting entries in General Ledger. You want to make sure that you print an account list to verify the posting type of each account. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail. But as you probably know, when you set up a GL account, you designate it as a P&L or a balance sheet account. P&L accounts at year-end close get closed out to retained earnings. Balance sheet accounts uh, roll for their balance. And so if, if one of those is set up improperly, it's going to react improperly. Uh, now, I do want to make sure you're aware that there are ways of fixing that, but it's an extra annoyance that you probably don't need to encounter. So if you're using unit accounts, so any of you that are using statistical or non-financial accounts, such as headcount, et cetera, there are some options when you set up your individual unit accounts that allow you to clear the balance during the year and close, if that's appropriate. If headcount's your choice, you probably would not close that. But there may be other unit accounts that you use that you want to make sure you zero out at the end of the year so that you can start your new year fresh. And then lastly, you want to uh, close the last period of the fiscal year. Now, optionally with General Ledger, you do have the ability to perform file maintenance on the financial series group of modules. And that just makes sure that your tables are clean. So first thing I wanted to do is uh, show you a smart list that uh, I've created that basically has each individual account, the description, and then the posting type. And what this allows us to do, if we sort by account number, it allows uh, if some account has been set up improperly, it will stick out uh, in that it's a balance sheet account in a group of P&L accounts or vice versa. And so this is, I think, a, an easy task. Uh, and can save you a significant amount of time is to double check this. All right, also under uh, the general ledger then, uh, this is where I was talking about unit accounts. There's an option on the unit account maintenance window that allows you to clear the balance during the year end. So this again allows us to either zero out or not based upon our preferences. So in the general ledger, we'll verify the settings in the general ledger setup window. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, we're going to make a backup. You also will print uh, a, a detailed trial balance. Uh, typically, that's a, a very important report for you to print prior to your year end. And then print your year end financial statements. Also, uh, setting up the new fiscal year and then closing the current fiscal year. So again, I just want to emphasize that you can have more than one fiscal year open at a time. Um, and then lastly, you do have the ability to close all of the fiscal periods for, that, for all series of modules once you've closed your general ledger. So a couple things that are important, and I wanted to make sure you saw these windows, is it is important to make sure that you know how your general ledger has, has been configured or set up. So there's a couple key points here. One is maintaining history. Uh, the system can keep account transaction and budget transaction history. And if you do, you, you do want to make sure you do that so that you'll have access to that detail uh, for prior years. And then also, um, there is an option here that says allow posting to history. Um, so this really refers to the idea of I closed my year, and then I have an adjustment I need to make to that year. If you have that select, if you have posting to history check marked, then the system will actually allow you to uh, post transactions to the most recently closed year. That also then, when the when the uh, entry has been made, it will also do the appropriate either balance forward roll or closing to uh, retained earnings. So you'll actually see a, another entry that's auto generated based upon the fact that you're posting to a historical year. So please make sure that you know that the, how those are set. And also, uh, in regards to posting the history, that can be turned on and off. Now, we talked throughout this, this entire session about fiscal periods and closing the series. So this is under our company setup window where you can see the financial series, sales series, uh, purchasing, etc. So many of our clients will actually, as they finish up a period, uh, during their year, they'll close that. And then at the end of the year, then you go in and close that last period of the year uh, once you've closed the year.
Uh, this is actually the year-end closing window. Uh, there's a couple things I wanted you to keep in mind here. So first of all, uh, our retained earnings account. So this is where all of your P&L accounts will close. You do also have the ability to close to a departmental retained earnings. So it will allow you to close uh, and have multiple retained earnings account if that's appropriate. Uh, you'll also notice that there is now an option, this is new, in maintaining inactive accounts. So rather than those accounts being removed with the year-end close, you have the option of leaving them. Um, a couple other new additions to the system. Number one, you'll notice across this bar I have a red box. Uh, this is an area where you'll actually have a progress bar. So as you run through the uh, year-end closing process, you'll know how far along it is. Uh, and for those of you that have been on GP a long time, you'll probably be glad that's there. Uh, in regards to many people would get worried that the system had locked up because it takes a while sometimes, depending on your data, uh, to close the year. And we've even had people that have gotten impatient and shut down or rebooted their system, in which case then they had a big mess. And that's when they were glad they made backups, as we've talked about all along. And then lastly, a new function that's in uh, GP 2013 R2 and uh, GP 2015 is you actually have the ability to reverse a, a year in closing. And so I can reopen a year after it's been closed. So keep that in mind um, as you, um, as you uh, work as well, because that gives you an additional layer of flexibility in regards to posting to closed years. So. Uh, some additional steps are just ad adjusting the budget figures for the new year and then printing your financial statements, making a backup. So the key things to remember with the general ledger are always, it's always the final module to be closed. It doesn't need to be closed immediately like others. Uh, there are issues with financials. Uh, if you delay past the first new period of the uh, uh, the first new accounting period, uh, in that the year end closing process rolls forward beginning balances for your balance sheet, and it also closes your um, P and L accounts to retained earnings. So, with the flexibility that you have in regards to either opening and uh, reopening in a year or posting to a historical year, you should feel comfortable that you have a lot of options. Also, before closing the general ledger, create an account smart list. I can't emphasize that enough. It's simple, and it'll make sure that all of your accounts are set up properly with the proper, uh, the proper posting type. Uh, and there's even a knowledge, of, a knowledge base about that. So you can see this uh, article 864913. Lastly, click the close year button only once. We've had people click it and then click it again, and you don't want to do that. So make sure that you only click that year once. Um, and so be patient, be methodical, and don't overdo it, and don't get anxious. So as we close up our, our webinar for today, I just wanted to uh, talk about a couple quick things. First of all, uh, as we close into the year end, uh, Microsoft is providing a uh, discount for of 15% if you need two or more GP users or modules between now and the 19th of December. And you can actually go to our website at uh, www.socius1.com forward slash Microsoft dash dynamics dash, dash promotions. If you go there, you'll see this and any other promotions that are available either on Dynamics GP or any of the ISV products that are available. The slide deck is going to be available uh, at uh, www.socius1.com slash GP year end. And this recording is also going to be available on our website as well. Now, another thing that I'd like to encourage you to do is join your local GP users group. I've been an active member in the, in the GPUG uh, chapter here. There's a lot of really uh, good people that know a lot about GP. You can learn. You can uh, take advantage of your solution at a higher level and really uh, get the greater return for your investment. So I certainly want to make sure that you feel comfortable uh, joining a group like that. It's very important. All right. So that's, uh, that's the end of our webinar. I just wanted to leave my contact information and Yvette Todd, who also is coordinating this event, uh, feel free to reach out to us at your convenience if you have questions, uh, and we can guide you along as you go through your year end. So, um,
thank you very much for your time and uh, hope that uh, everything goes really smoothly for you as you finish up 2014. Thank you.